Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about how to get rid of the dark scarred skin that appears after you have an eczema, psoriasis, or acne flare. I get questions about this all the time, so I'm hoping that this video helps. The first thing I wanna say is that every single person is different, has different skin tones, different pigments, um, and different healing capabilities. So everyone will get different results. Some people, unfortunately, will have scarring the rest of their life, or at least for many years, whereas others won't have to do anything and will the scars will just naturally fade and go away on their own. That being said, the tips I'll be sharing with you in this video are hopefully going to at least help improve the appearance of your skin, regardless of where you sit on the healing spectrum. Um, okay, so the first uh, important thing to know is that say you have an, an eczema or, or psoriasis flare. Both eczema and psoriasis, even though eczema is not an autoimmune condition, it's, it's uh, an autoimmune process or reaction in the body happening. So. Either way, if you get a rash, say, on your hand, what actually is happening is there are several layers of, of epithelial cells or of tissue that are being damaged. When you have an, a, a psoriasis flare, your immune system is damaging that tissue wherever your flare is happening. So if it's on your hand, your immune system is damaging the, the cells, the skin cells of your hand, which means it's not a very superficial um, uh, condition unfortunately it's it goes pretty deep through a few skin cells so when your psoriasis goes away and now you're left with some dark skin or scarring the first thing you want to know is it's that it goes many layers deep so tanning it i mean it might help it you know hide its its um dominance it might make it look a little bit better and help it fade a bit but tanning is not going to completely get rid of it alone because it goes a few layers deep so what you want to know and do and think about is that when your body is regenerating and repairing itself it doesn't just do that to organs it does that to your skin as well so that good thing is that you're not always going to have this exact layer of skin right here that's going to fall off and you're gonna have new skin being produced each time say the psoriasis damage goes eight skin cells deep okay say it goes eight layers deep if your body turns over eight layers of skin eventually that scarring should be gone right so that's how how it kind of works where the first thing you want to do is give your body time. T tanning, any other creams, lotions, potions you put on might help it fade a tiny bit, but as long as you still have the skin cells present, you're going to see the scar. So what we're hoping is that by giving your body time, and again, everyone's different, it could take weeks to months to years, at some point when your skin has, has sloughed off, your body's always, you know, skin cells die, they fall off, and then you get new skin growth. So as that happens, layers will come off and you will start to see your scar fading and hopefully going away. There's a few things that you can do to speed up that skin turnover process. The first thing is by dry brushing. I love dry brushing a lot. The one thing though is that you don't want to dry brush on a psoriasis patch. So if you currently have psoriasis, do not dry brush it. Um, you just want to be very careful because your body can be quite sensitive. And you don't even have to be aggressive. You can just use a dry brush and go in a very gentle circular motion wherever your, your scars are. But be very, very, very gentle. The other thing that I do like doing is tanning. Um, obviously you don't wanna be baking out in hot sun forever cause that can you know, either cause skin burns or it can cause skin damage because you know, too much UV exposure can damage the skin. So I like applying an all natural sunscreen that is non-toxic. So I typically do cocoa, shea and co cocoa butter, shea butter and coconut oil and I mix them together and apply that. I believe it's a very mild SPF. It's only like SPF 15, I think, when you do it that way. Um, but that way you're still able to get sun on your skin while still giving it some sort of protection. But you can definitely go and use a, a, a higher SPF. But I do find when you physically tan the skin, it does help to kind of fade those. Um, but the best thing to do is to just get rid of those, those um, the dry skin is by dry brushing and then your skin will fall off and you'll get new cell turnover. Okay, the next thing that I do suggest doing is glutathione. So glutathione is used by the body, by the liver to detoxify and help your liver detoxify, detoxifies your cells and it gives your body antioxidants. The thing to remember is that if you have damaged skin cells, you want to reflood your system with antioxidants to um, reverse that oxidation that's happening in the body. Glutathione is great for that. And what glutathione can also do is actually help lighten the skin. Um, it's not going to make you turn white. Don't worry about that. But it does help and it can help. And I've seen it help in the past. Lighten up your skin a little bit. That being said, if you have Lyme disease, if you have some severe issues, you don't want to be on glutathione at least 
if you're not under the guidance of a practitioner because glutathione can make you detoxify way too quickly and it can trigger herxing it can trigger a lot of uh, healing crises and things like that so be careful when you're taking glutathione but everybody at some point needs glutathione because our body plunges through glutathione really quickly and it's actually hard to absorb so i always recommend using a liposomal glutathione and follow the bottle dosage or work with your practitioner but i'm um, taking that a little bit you know for a few months can help with antioxidants and can definitely help to lighten up the scarring a little bit so that's another suggestion the third tip is to use rosehip and vitamin e on your scars rosehip uh it's known as rosehip essential oil but it's not technically an essential oil um, but rosehip oil is fantastic for stimulating um, the regeneration of skin cells so it's really good usually women will use it for stretch marks because it helps with that healing of the skin so i like taking rosehip oil mixing it with some coconut oil and i add some liquid vitamin e to it and i just apply it to my hands so that's something that you can do or wherever you have the scarring so it can be on your face as well um, so liquid vitamin e vitamin e is a powerful antioxidant that absorbs through the skin so it's hydrating the skin it's absorbing and, and again we want to do a lot of antioxidants to reverse that oxidation that happened. So vitamin E, glutathione, vitamin C, blueberry powder, acai, any antioxidants that you can get in you want to, but vitamin E specifically is fat soluble, which means it'll, it'll absorb through the skin um, and help in that area that you're applying it to uh, help regenerate skin cells and reduce inflammation. So rosehip, vitamin E, coconut oil, you can make a little serum and spread it all over your body wherever it's needed. Those are my three main tips the next tip is sauna so and this is might be a little bit weird but the thing that you again want to remember is that you want your body to regenerate skin cells so you want what's on your body to fall off or flake off and you want new cells to come that are fresh and that have not been damaged and that are not scarred and that way your scars can fade so what i really like to do is sit in a sauna and sweat so much out and so many toxins out through the skin that it kind of, when you have like sweating and salt on the skin, it kind of suggests and tells your body to let's release more skin cells and bring up new skin. So the more you detoxify, the more, uh, the easier it is going to be for your body to um, take its resources to regenerate new and healthy skin cells. I hope this is making sense. Um, I don't have notes, so this video is all like just whatever's in my mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, detoxing through a sauna, it's amazing because as the more you sweat, the more gunk comes out of your body. That salt in the sweat stimulates cell regrowth or regeneration. And as your body detoxes, it has more uh, resources then to uh, turn to making your hair, skin, and nails look beautiful. So regenerating cells and things like that. So saunas can be great. Another thing is if you have acne scarring on your face, you want to consider a very gentle face facial. So I always like doing like a bentonite clay or charcoal mask. You can make it yourself at home and there are recipes on Google and you'll just apply it to your face and then rinse it off. And that can be a very gentle way to help clear out some of that dead skin from the face. So new beautiful baby skin can come through. Um, or you can go to a, a spa and they can do something like that for you. Or you can get a Clarisonic brush. It's a spinning brush. Just do one that's on a very low speed. I see some people using hardcore speed and that's so damaging to your gentle cells on your face. So use a very gentle speed, but that circular spinning motion can just help again to remove dead skin cells so that new fresh cells can appear. That's the whole idea. Until those cells are gone and cleared out, you're going to have scarring. So anything that you can do to help with that, Epsom salt baths are amazing for scarring. I do like five or six big cups of salt in a full tub and I'll throw in some essential oils. For oils, I love doing skin oils. So blue tansy or German chamomile, helichrysum, frankincense, and or myrrh. Those are my top skin oils. You can use uh, all of them in your bath or just one, whatever you have on hand, but those essential oils are great for inflammation of the skin. So if you soak in salt and those oils in your tub, it's going to help again, pull off all of that dead skin that we don't want and stimulate healing a new layer of skin. So these are just some of my suggestions. For me personally, when I had psoriasis, I was lucky enough to always have the scars disappear. So I actually don't have any scars from psoriasis, even though I had full head to toe coverage. Um, so I'm very grateful for that, but I know a lot of people aren't as fortunate and depending on your skin tone, um, you can be left with a lot of scars. So these tips can definitely help to speed up that healing process in the skin at the end of the day you need to uh, get those layers of skin off. Please do not do any facial, crazy facial peels or things like that. 
they are so harm harmful to the body and they will just trigger much more inflammation. So always be gentle with your body and your skin. Hydrate like crazy. Um, keep your, your cells nice and healthy. But that's, that's what I have for you guys today. So I really hope that this video helped. Um, to give you a very, very quick recap, you want to gently dry brush and you can do charcoal or uh, clay masks. You want to use vitamin E and rosehip topically. You want to take glutathione internally if your practitioner says it's A-OK -okay, uh, to help lighten the skin and flood your system with antioxidants. You also want to do vitamin C, blueberry powder, acai, you know, powders or something like that. Medicinal mushrooms just get a lot of antioxidants in your body. Drink a lot of water, do a hot Epsom salt bath with a lot of salt and anti-inflammatory essential oils uh, and tanning and a sauna. So those are the different things that you can do everything or just a couple of these or one of these, but hopefully that with all of these suggestions, it can be enough to kind of get you started on clearing up your skin. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will chat with you in my next video. Bye.